All right, y'all, so I have made it to work. We are about to walk in and see what the schedule beholds. I don't know if I'm gonna be on my floor or if I'm going to be on a, or they're gonna float me, but let's see. So as you can see, the schedule is not up. So I don't know where I'm going to be. I'm being floated. That is one of the things about shovel nursing that you have to be comfortable with that and you have to be prepared. You have to remember that you are meeting a need of theirs. And so generally, unless it's stated in your contract that you are going to be a float nurse, generally you will have a home unit, but for whatever reason, if they need you somewhere else, they will float you somewhere else. So I am being floated to another unit. So I'm going to try my best because being floated to another unit for the first time, like trying to figure stuff out, codes, where everything is at, it throws me a little bit off of schedule. So I may or may not have time to like pick up the camera, but I'm going to try my best. Um, and so I will see y'all when I get myself situated and sit down. All right, y'all, so I am in the med room. Here they do not have the patient's meds in the room, so I have to pull my own meds. So what I do is just get a bag, get my label so I can know what the patient is for, and then pull everything at the beginning of the shift. I try to do it before everybody comes in here because it'll be a line in a minute. Um, but because I got report late, I'm kind of a little tiny bit behind, but the good thing is I only have four patients tonight and I am on the COVID unit. I don't know if I told y'all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull these meds and then I'll come back. All right, so really quickly, y'all. Um, here you cannot pass meds until eight o'clock. Like the system won't even let you scan them. So if you wanted to do them early, they won't. And so what I do is, since I am on a tele floor with COVID patients, I have to fill out my tele strip. This is new for me because it's computerized. The hospital that I was at, they would give you like a paper strip and you would have to do it. But this one I like better because you can just click where the Q, R, S, T, and P waves are and it calculates everything for you. But you just have to document them on your own. Like you have to account for your own tele strip. So I do that for all of my patients first before I go get them meds. Um, so that way when I'm done with meds, that's just like one less thing that I have to worry about. So I'm gonna do that and I will come back. about the meds not being in the room is that if they are not in the pixies they usually have a patient then but if they're not in the patient's den then you have to call pharmacy send them up and this is a huge hospital so sometimes it takes them a little bit longer to send it up so that's what i'm doing for one of my patients now because honestly i don't want to go in there without all the meds it's covid i want to make sure i have everything i need before i go in there so that i don't have to go back so while I'm waiting for that minute to come up, I'm just gonna go ahead and pass some of my other ones. Okay, y'all, I'm finally done passing my meds. I'm actually a little bit behind, it's 10 o'clock. And typically I'm done with passing my meds by that time, but I'm waiting for a few small foods. So hopefully I can finally sit down. So I'm gonna chart. I have my snack, cause y'all know I'm, I have a designated snack period. <laughs> after I pass my meds. Um, so yeah, I'm just about to chart right now. And then I'm about to take off all this extra shit. So these masks, oh, they so irritating. It's like, oh, there's so much stuff you have to put on. On COVID, I don't mind the floor, actually. It's just the dawning on and off. Look at my face. Mad bothers me but I'm about to chart so I will see you guys in a bit. Alright y'all really quick so mints are done. 
I don't have anything left except for I think like the um, mucinex and then like um, ornaments. But what I like to do is this is my grain. I think I showed y'all this. But I like to fill this out because it makes it so much easier for me to give report. Um, I've sent a few of you guys this. If you do want it, send me an email and I will send it to you. But I made this up myself. Um, it's more so a telly one, but you can use it if you're working med surgery or whatever. Um, but it's telly because this little heart right here, I color it in if the person is on telemetry or not. But other than that, you can use this for morning or night shift. This can be 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. Just use it accordingly. But I use this every single shift and I update it as I go. Um, it's big enough for me to put everything on here, but I write kind of small. So anyway, I'm about to go over all of my patients, look at their history, look at any doctor's notes, add it on here, put IVs with fluids they're on, things like that. So that way in the morning, all I have to do is run through this and it's an easy, smooth report. It's not like, uh, they got this or, uh, they got that, or I'm trying to like think or remember stuff. Everything will be written down here. So that's what I like to do. I'm going to fill this out and we'll see how our night goes. All right, y'all. So I made it to the end of the shift. This shift was a little bit too easy. So I'm going to actually record tomorrow because I want her to see the real. Like, I want to come to y'all telling y'all the type of stuff that I be going through. Like, I only have four patients, which happens in the history of never. And all of my patients were, like, easy peasy. Like, I only had, like, one agony patient who kept calling out for, like, cough medicine. But other than that, I had, like, an easy night. Like, I was able to do homework, like, plan out stuff. Like, it was a little bit too easy, so... Tomorrow, I'm pretty sure I'll be on my regular floor, and I'm going to try to pick up the phone in so I can show y'all, like, the real of what I be going through, because I had actually been up there to visit them, because I had so much time, um, and they was going through it. It was a cold, and doing the rapid, and this, and that, so tomorrow or today, um, I'm not hoping for that. I'm never hoping for a tough shift, but... I think that'll be more like the reality because this literally, when I say literally, this never happens. This literally never happens. So I'm thankful for it because I still got three more nights to go. I'm doing four in a row and this is only day one of four. So I'm waiting for a report. I hate when people are late for report because I'm here early. I get here early and um I'm ready to go. And I think that of the people who are working during the day, like y'all be ready to go. So I, as a common courtesy, like I'm trying to get here early so you can give me a report and you can go about your business. Um, but apparently the person who I'm giving a report is known to be late. And it's actually, it's late, late. What time is it? It's 6.50, so I don't know how late she got to be, but if she a little bit too late she about to get a report with an attitude because i don't like waiting around i'm at the clock as soon as i can clock out so i'm gonna wait for her and i will talk to y'all later today all right y'all so i am on my regular floor and it is a shit show which is usual um i have six patients tonight and they all are pretty much a heavy load um when i say heavy load like i need to do dressing changes that were not done during the day one of them has an ng tube that is not inserted correctly wasn't inserted correctly and still not as inserted correctly which means that's going to leave me to do it somebody has urinary retention with the foley so i have to monitor that so i must actually know so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go introduce myself to each of everybody because right now we got reported we don't we didn't do bad shit so we set a computer and we talk sometimes we do this and sometimes we don't um i'm gonna go actually look at them i'm gonna see what their demeanor is i'm gonna be able to tell if they needy patients if they're gonna be cool patients as if they need anything if they need anything for pain and then i'll use that to determine as well to determine who am i going to start with first but 
normally I'm going to start with the patient who has the highest acuity, the one who I feel like I am going to be spending the most time on. If I can get them out of the way, everybody else will be a breeze. But it, it still depends on the level of acuity because sometimes people just be extra and you want to get them out of the way. But sometimes it's easier to just knock out all the easy people so that you can spend that time on them, whatever, however much, because you never know how much time you're going to spend on them. So after I do that, then I'm going to come back and get my meds. Um, so I'll pull up my mask for all my people and then I will come back and check in with y'all. see how it's nobody in here it's because i'm pulling my meds early i don't know what everybody else be doing maybe they just be looking over the notes or i don't know but there's usually never anybody in here i'm usually the first person to come pull my meds if i like get in and get out i also pull like if i have iv meds like this patient has um photonic so i know that i'm gonna need a flush and i'm gonna, I'm gonna need a blunt test so i just throw it in there so I don't forget, if I have insulin, I'll put an alcohol pile in it, pat, uh, pad in there, stuff like that. It just makes it easier for me. Cause I don't like to carry out around a lot of stuff either. And I don't use a, a computer. I use the, the phone to pass my meds because they're limited on computers here. And I just don't look like lugging around a whole big old computer. It's just more convenient for me to do it that way. So I guess one perk to like the other hospital that I used to work at is we would have all of our meds in the patient's room. Pharmacy would send them up every morning and you would have your meds for the night and the evening. So that does make things a lot easier. So I do miss that. Um, but this also isn't bad. Like it wasn't a hard adjustment. I wasn't like, oh, I gotta pull my own meds. Like, I don't know, you just get used to things after a while when you're not used to something. And that's the thing about um, travel nursing is that you have to really be um, not so necessarily resistant to change. You have to be, you have to easily adapt. Because things can always change. Y'all know, you're dealing with nursing like four definitely have to be the type of person who can easily adapt because if not you're not gonna make it or you're gonna be disgruntled every single day because literally stuff is always changing i'm about to set up my heater y'all know it's always cold in the hospital and i cannot take it got me a little portable portable here i got it from um lowe's for 15 dollars and when i tell y'all this thing be putting on some heat Honey, it be put on heat. It is 10 minutes to 8. So I am about to get started with my night. I have six patients tonight. We're not having seven because we have an adequate amount of nurses. So that is beautiful. But um, so that means I'm not going to get any admins. And I can just focus on patient care, which I love. No interruption. So. I'm going to head, go ahead and get started with that and start passing my meds. All right, earrings in. Let me go ahead and get these meds passed and then I'll come in and check in with y'all throughout the night. All right, y'all, quick check in. I have passed two sets of meds. One thing I will say, like, the reason why I do go around and see my patients before I um, pull my meds is because I like to know if they need anything because I might like work night shift and I'm still in 10 they're going to work what their nighttime is or something to calm them down throughout the night and i tend to pull them regardless just because you never know when i go when i go in there and ask them before i pull them in, it's like hey do you need anything sometimes they usually tell me no and some patients will tell you like hey can you pull me a sleeping pill um but then when i go back say they say no i don't need anything when i go back and they'll be like 
it's always something they always forget and so i try to be proactive in remembering anything i bring water i bring blankets i will bring um nighttime meals just so i'm not like running back and forth so that's one thing to keep in mind just trying to be proactive so that you can minimize the time that you are going in and out of the room so i've already passed two minutes for whatever reason tonight i don't feel rushed to do anything like i'm literally going at my own pace it's 8 30 though so i still got good timing so i'm about to chart one thing i also do is i chart as i go um if i especially if i have six patients um i don't know i just find it easier and as you do it assessments get super simple so i'm just gonna let it, I, I chart each patient i chart on each patient as i give their meds and so i'm just gonna do that right quick so then that way when i'm sitting down for the night i really don't have to worry like I did have an admission that changed the shift. The patient was already here before I got here, but she didn't do the admission. So I had to go over those questions with him. And then I have to do the admission. So that's what I mean. Like sometimes a lot of stuff gets left behind, but day shift is really busy. But this nurse, I know her, she's always leaving stuff behind. So I kind of got a little bit of attitude about it, but at the end of the day, it's like, what can I do? Just do what you gotta do. So. I'm about to go ahead and get that out the way and then I'll check in with you guys later. Alright y'all, I'm back. I've passed three minutes. It's 9.15. So I'm not doing too bad. I had a little dressing change. Um, I actually don't mind those dressing changes. I heard that um, retail nurses, they make really good money. Were you ever thinking about going into a sector of nursing that pays well? Check out um, Mom Care. They do really good. So it looks like I have three more meds to pass. Um, this one's easy. I think I had another dressing change to pass, actually. I mean, to do. Let me see. Um, and this is what I mean by I don't want to be one of them nurses. Like, the nurse who got me before, I know that she is known for leaving stuff behind. Like, she left me at least three dressing changes, a messed up NG tube, a messed up Foley, an admission that needed to be done. Like, she left me a lot, but surprisingly, I don't really have an uh, attitude too much. Because usually, I'll be, like, over it, but I'm in a good mood today, so... Um, I'm about to see who I'm going to do next. I think I got another dressing change, and then... I just changed her. I did her. This is my girl. So I got, yeah, I have two more dressing changes. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do the most difficult one just to get it out of the way. And then I'll come back and check in with y'all. All right, y'all. So I'm back from doing my, how many patients meds have I passed? Pass, 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 pass. So I got two more meds to pass. I think one of them don't even have meds, actually. Um, but anyway, I came back to tell y'all the wound dressing that I did. Like, so my patient has like a, it started out as a hernia. They picked up their grandkid or something like that. And they had to do surgery. And so her, the abdomen is just open. It looks so cool. Like, I probably would do good at wound dressings. Because that's, they, like, they don't gross me out. The only thing that grosses me out is like traits. I cannot do saliva and stuff like that. But... This one was actually good. Like, I actually enjoyed changing their dressing. It took me about 20 minutes or whatever, but I don't know. It's just something about, like, taking the old one off and then making it all neat and new and pretty. So, I am done with that one. I have to go back and give them some pain meds. Um, but other than that, they're good. So, yes. Oh, so I do have two more meds to give it's 10 o'clock now so technically i'm late but listen i'm not rushing so this one i can give real quick and then this one is nothing okay so i got a few people who are diabetic so i just have to get insulin and that's it so i'm about to go ahead and do that and next time i talk to y'all hopefully i will be done passing my meds there we go so it is 10 30 and I'm just now finishing past my meds, so I'm working out. Don't ever be concerned about being late because it happens, especially when you get a crab report and you're going to let that work. So, um, oh, I am about to chart really quick and I don't know, I gotta take my snacks, right? So that's what I'm about to do. Um, so I'm about to chart. Eat my snack and I'll hit y'all later.
all right y'all so it is 5 18 i only have an hour long i count it as an hour because around 6 30 that's when everybody start coming in i do record and i'm dipping out but anyway i have an antibiotic that i need to hang i'm gonna check on everybody make sure they're good go over on my go over my brain make sure i got everything i need on there and then that will end the night um but of course i'm gonna come in like when i'm walking out just in case something happens between now and then or just to kind of just end my night here um so i'm gonna go hang this right quick and i will be right back all right y'all so it is 6 37 and we didn't have a secretary so that means that nobody made the schedule for the morning shift so when the se secretary for the morning shift got here she has to do that so we have nurses here we have cnas here but nobody can give report because nobody knows where they're going so this is what i mean by like this is the type of stuff you have to deal with um it's not like a big deal but y'all know i like to get out of here on time i the earliest we can clock out is 708 and i'll be at the clock at 708 for now everybody's just waiting around trying to figure out who has what assignment and then we'll go from there so i will probably see y'all when i'm walking off the bus so what ended up happening is that i just went up to a nurse and was like hey do you want to take my assignment <laughs> because i didn't really have like after everything was said and done like yes she left me a lot of stuff to do um during the night but it was still manageable and the lady was all right, cool like i'll take your assignment so that way I didn't have to wait for the secretary to assign everybody. And then even better, she, um, what was I to say? I'm so tired. Even better, she had already had the patients like a few days before. So she was familiar with everybody. So I didn't have to give her like an in-depth report. It was like more like a, um, it was more like an update. So now it's 7.03. So I have a few more minutes before I can clock out. Like I said, I be at the door. Like, I'm not the person where I'm about to stay late. Now, I think in the history of me being a nurse, I've probably only stayed late once, honestly. And that was when I was working here because my assignment was so shitty. And I didn't want to leave a day nurse with a whole bunch of stuff. So, I am about to wait so that I can clock out. And then... Dip out. Hey y'all, so it's day three. I'm really tired. Like I, I fell asleep in the car and got out late. I mean, I wasn't late for work, but I was later than I usually normally. By the time I woke up, I'm usually in the hospital, but we have seven patients today. But I got one empty bed and I have one getting discharged tonight. So we'll see how the night goes, and I will come back in and check with you guys. All right, y'all. So. I am about to clean off my space. I'm like a germaphobe, and it's crazy for a germaphobe to be working in the hospital. But I bleach everything down, throw everything away, because people be junk, you be stuff all over here. I throw, I, I be in that habit of like, I just start throwing everything away. Pens, paper, pencils, old supplies, all of that stuff. And then I'm gonna bleach everything down so my space is clean. I clean my chair, I clean everything else. So that's what I'm about to do. forever to dissolve so i usually just hook it up like 30 minutes or so before i need to go in there that way i'm not like trying to do it in the room because these things are like annoying and you're not supposed to shake it i heard but i'm like how else is it gonna do it if, if i didn't shake it it would take forever to dissolve forever 
the thing y'all we don't have a secretary so this is the type of stuff that you have to deal with sometimes when you're traveling and we did we almost didn't have a third cna but they took the secretary and put them on the floor so that helped us out tremendously but um Tonight is gonna be a good night. I think I told y'all I had seven patients. I'm not even tripping when it's like this. Like I move at my own pace. I don't stress. I don't worry. I do what I can. Cause I notice when I'm like upset, irritated, and worried, like my night go bad. Versus when I'm just like, it is what it is. My night still may be busy. What is this guy asking for Jasmine to see him today? Somebody's asking for Jasmine? No, yeah, uh, she was saying something. It's a, um, she yeah. never came. She never came? No. Um, damn, I lost my train of thought. Oh, you know what I'm saying? When I just go with the flow, I feel better about my night. I know that I'm only one person and I can only do so much, so I don't even trip. When they be like, You got seven patients, we don't have a CNA, we don't have a sex service. Like, okay, no problem. I'm moving at my own pace because I can't afford to be stressed out. I do what I can, so that's what I'm doing tonight. I'm about to get ready to pass my meds. It's 8 o'clock, so I will see you guys later. Alright, y'all. So, all my meds are passed. I have six patients now. And I'm getting an admit from ICU. Which, actually, I don't mind getting transfers because that means I don't have to do a whole admission history. Um, so, that patient is coming. And then I'm getting rid of a patient. One is getting discharged to a sniff. So, we I usually don't have discharges. Like, night shift rarely gets discharges most of that is done during the day which is one of the reasons why i like night shifts like there are a lot of perks like a lot of orders are usually put in during day shift um a lot of dressing changes are usually done during day shift there's just a i don't know i don't see myself ever doing day shift unless i like have to because i get like if you have a family or something like that you want to be home with your kids and stuff like that i get that but i don't have that so I just don't foresee me ever doing day shift. Too many people, too many distractions, too much required of you. There's already enough required of us as nurses in general. So on top of day shift, I'm good. But I'm about to go ahead and chart. I didn't chart as I went along because I knew that I was about to be busy today. Not busy, but the thing about me charting as I go, like some days I do it. If I'm like in a mood where I'm like, okay, I'll chart as I go. I'll do it, but then some days I'll just wait. Um, so I'm about to eat my snacks and um, wait on my new patient. I already got report. The room is already set up and then we'll go from there. That's pretty much it. So I'll see you guys in a bit. So my new admin patient came from ICU. So this is why it's important that you like pay attention to certain things before they actually come up here because the patient honestly shouldn't be here um but what i'm dealing with right now is a fifth rbr so this is not a new thing and so right now i'm just trying to get the rate under control and so that is what i'm dealing with right now um luckily i have one more already done it is 3 37 in the morning i don't mind stuff like this because it makes the night go by a little bit faster mind you i'm on night three and I was actually tired. I was like super, super tired um, tonight. But I'm awake now that that has happened. So I'm just waiting, waiting, waiting. So I will check in with you guys later. All right, y'all, back with the update. I feel like all I've been doing all day is giving out antibiotics, which is rare. <laughs> but um, it is 4.40. So... Um, I'm still working on that. What am I doing? Focus. I'm still working on that heart rate. At this point, the patient just needs to be transferred because I've did several things and I am unable to get it under control. I just want to check in with her. Let's y'all know how my night is going. It's not even honestly. It's not a bad night. It's not like I don't. I don't feel overwhelmed or anything like that. I feel pretty decent. So. I wish this was my last night, though, but I have to come back today, so <sighs> we shall see. So, I'll, um, next time I see y'all, because I don't think between now and then, I don't think I'm going to have time to even come back and talk, because I want to make sure that I got everything that I need done. So, I'll probably see y'all when I'm, um, actually leaving out, though. I shall return.
Okay. Y'all, when I say it always happened at the last minute, and y'all see my hair, y'all, that's that is indicative of how the last hour of my shift went. Because anytime I feel like anytime I'm in your room every 15 minutes trying to give you medicine or something like that, I don't have like a you're not a patient who needs to be on a regular floor. Mind you, I had seven patients today. So I don't have time for that. So we were never able to get the heart rate under control. And the doctor just kept putting me in order at the order, at the order, at the order. And I'm just like, literally at the last minute, I get 6.30, he put in like 15 damn orders. Like wanted to start a drip, wanted to pr uh, uh, push more pressers. Like mind you, I've been with the patient all night. I've been in that room every 15 minutes trying to get that heart rate under control. And this is not an easy patient. Like this is somebody who is not oriented, somebody who is combative. You know what I'm saying? So it's not making it easier on me, bro. <laughs> so the girl that I gave reports to, like, first of all, seven patients in day shift, like, oh, they really trying it. Like, that's not okay. She was so mad. But the crazy thing about nurses, from my experience, like we will complain amongst ourselves but nobody actually in my experience nobody has actually ever stood up and said no i'm not taking this many patients like no now patient safety is at risk like no now my license is at risk like nobody actually stands up and does that and i feel like the reason why facilities will overwhelm you with no regard for you is because nobody says anything we just all complain amongst ourselves like the whole as soon as they came in everybody looking like what but i told her i was like girl because i gotta come back tonight i was like girl if you don't do nothing else today for me and you both to get that patient off this floor like we cannot give our time to somebody who needs that level of care it's just not rational like if i am in your room every 15 minutes if I am on the phone with the doctor every five minutes trying to get whatever under control, like, no, that patient needs to go. 7.23. Y'all know I'd be at that clock at 7.08. I was still giving a report at 7.08. And that ain't me. So that's how you know, like, it was rough. That's my little rant. But I'm so thankful for rest <laughs> because my ass is about to head home take me a nice hot shower and go to sleep so i will see you guys tonight i look so crazy look at my hair y'all like that's how you know when the ponytail be looking ruffled and oh child i had a rough night but i will see y'all tonight all right y'all so i told y'all i was gonna show y'all the real of this shit because like it is no joke i, I have to take a minute to like cry a little bit because it's the beginning of this shift and i am overwhelmed like me and a person who i just got report from like we were literally crying together because we are tired we are so tired like they say that it's the year to nurse and they say that they care about us they say they care about patient safety but literally this is a business it's all about them dollars that's all they care about but I had a patient that I was working on diligently last night. I'm talking about in that room every five minutes. And if I have to be in your room every five minutes, you don't need to be on a regular med surge telly floor. You need to be in ICU or you need to be in a step down unit where the people have the time to delegate or to treat you properly. I cannot have seven patients and be in somebody's room every five minutes. Like, it's just not feasible. Like somewhere patient care is going to lack. And they had seven patients this morning. And she was like, the girl who I got report to, which I understood it, she was like, what? You got to be kidding me. And it's frustrating because we care about our patients. We want the best for them. We advocate for them. And I don't know, it's not necessarily a facility's fault or anything like that. It's just that we don't have staff we don't have the adequate staff to treat patients and sometimes i feel like that doesn't matter patient safety 
patient care that's just a word it, it doesn't have any meaning behind it because if it did why would you give us seven patients you know if it did why do we not have adequate resources like why do we not have normal saline on the floor you know if we got to mix an antibiotic why do we not have bags to mix it that takes time for me to go find it from another floor like if i it's just it's frustrating it's frustrating and um this is the beginning of my shift and this is night four and i just wanted to come on here and show y'all the real because y'all might see nurse bay and everybody looking cute with their uniforms on and you see the money but that money don't mean nothing if mentally you're not stable like this takes a toll on you like nurse burnout is real mind you i haven't even been doing this for that long and i am tired i am legit tired because i care about my patients and i don't want to be that nurse who like leaves things behind or doesn't do things because I'm tired. I just don't want to be that nurse. Like, I, I care about my patients. I want the best for them. But it's like, I'm only one person. There's only so much that I can do. Like, nursing is a very tough job. Like, you have to be on your shit at all times. I'm talking about every single moment. And it doesn't make it any better when you don't have resources. It doesn't make it any better when you are overloaded with patients. It doesn't make it better when you don't have a manager to ask questions. It does. It just. I need to vent before I go out there, because if I don't, my mind is not going to be equipped enough to focus. And so it's OK to come in and go in the bedroom, go in the bathroom, cry it out, put your big girl panties on and head back out there and do what we supposed to do. Save lives. So. I'm about to take 30 more seconds to breathe, go out there, do the damn thing, and I will talk to y'all in a few. Yeah. All right, y'all, as y'all can see, I'm sitting down. God must have felt it inside of me because um, it's nine o'clock and I have all my meds passed, which is a miracle. <laughs> um, I feel so much better now. I'm the type of person, like, I need to cry and get it out so that I can move on. Like, crying is, like, healthy for me. But even if it's not, like, don't feel bad if you are that type of person who just needs to step away from it for a second. Because I'm telling you, if you don't, sorry, I'm playing out my nose. Y'all know them, them masks make your nose snotty. If you don't, you're not going to be able to go about your day. So I needed that. I needed to just breathe. When I tell you me and the girl I was giving a report to were like literally crying, like we were literally just sitting there like in disbelief. Like, is this reality? Like, damn, like this, this is really how they treat nurses. So I feel better. Um, I still have stuff to do. I'm tired. I'm glad that today is my fourth day and i'll be off for the next three so i can get some rest when i tell you self-care is so important as a nurse like it's non-negotiable and if that self-care means sleeping all day there's nothing wrong with that so i'm about to go ahead and chart um i have to take a patient down to the morgue and right after that i do that i have to um i'll probably be getting a new patient thankfully we only have six tonight. So that makes me feel better. I'm drained, if y'all could tell. I am drained, like literally to my core. So I'm about to eat my snack, because y'all know I gotta have a snack break. And um, see what the night behold. So I will check in with y'all later. You want me to go? If you want to, I'm still doing fucking vitals. I'm not it. I'm on. Yes, still vitals. Okay, I'm gonna go away like 9:30. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Y'all, we all behind. We for real of it. We for real. You wanna be a travel nurse? 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.